As you know by now, as an instrument pilot, the FAA really wants you to be thorough in your flight planning. So let you and I talk about gathering some very important details so you can safely plan your IFR flights. Now let's assume that you're planning an IFR trip and you'd like to know the latest status on airport conditions such as runway closures, runway lighting, and snow conditions for your departure and at your destination airport. Now that sounds like a really good idea, but the FAA wants you to know that flight service is your official FAA source for this kind of information for the most current departure and route and destination flight information when you're planning a flight. And flight service can be contacted by calling 1-800-WEATHER-BRIEF and speaking directly with a flight service station specialist or by accessing them on the internet at 1-800-WEATHERBRIEF.COM. Now you can still get FAA approved information from popular flight planning apps like ForeFlight, WingX, Garmin Pilot, and FlightPlan.com. Although they're not official FAA products or services, they do get weather information from the National Weather Service and aeronautical information from official FAA sources. So you may just want to ensure that if you do use one of these apps or services, Make sure they keep a record of your briefing like 1-800-WEATHER-BRIEF does. Now, just in case there's ever a question of your having received it, that weather uh, recording, or that recording of your briefing is very important. Now, let's take a look at a couple very helpful types of notices to airmen or NOTAMs. Uh, let's talk about, first of all, NOTAM Ds. By the way, there used to be NOTAM Ls, uh, but NOTAM Ls used to be only distributed locally, so they don't exist anymore. But the D in NOTAM D tells you that they cover important things worthy of distant dissemination. Now, NOTAM Ds cover valuable information about public use airports, uh, things like uh, closures of runways or taxiways, personnel and equipment near runways, or, or an airport rotating beacon or VASI out of service, or, or things like VORs, navigation aids out of service. So those are the kinds of things you'll see in NOTAM Ds. Now, when you read a NOTAM D, there's a little abbreviation that will help you figure out what the NOTAM is all about. Here we see NAV, and these are called keywords that say things like runway, taxiway, apron, airspace, communications, navigation, instrument approach procedures, and GPS. So when you see these keywords, it tells you what the NOTAM is all about. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Let's take a look first of all at this one. It's for DEN, that's Denver International Airport. And we can see that this NOTAM has a, a key word in it, which is taxiway, which tells us it's a taxiway NOTAM. So let's go ahead and decode this. First of all, the NOTAM begins with an exclamation point, which means it's an accountable location. That must mean something to the FAA. It doesn't mean anything to me, but that's what they uh, think it is, an accountable location. And the location is DEN and uh, it's uh, uh, the eighth month and this is a 373rd uh, NOTAM in the sequence of NOTAMs. So that sounds like a lot of NOTAMs to me. All right, let's take a look at it. The parentheses tells you the location once again. Uh, and it also uh, includes a numbering for search purposes here. And it's a, and then followed by a slash, which is again the 18th year. And it says Denver, the taxiway M between taxiway Zulu and taxiway Zulu November is closed. The aircraft with wingspans more than 171 feet. I think we're going to be okay in the 172. All right. And now you need to know the times the NOTAM is in effect. And it's in the, it's at the 18th year, 8th month, 13th day uh, at 1806 Zulu. And it's in effect till the 18th year, 9th month, 1st day at 600 Zulu. That was too easy for everybody. Let's do another one. Uh, let's take a look again at, uh, we have DEN here, and there's all of this information, but let's read it. Mile high uh, uh, navigation, it's a navigation note, mile high Vortac is out of service from the 18th year to the seventh month of the 30th day at 1331 Zulu until the 18th year, the 10th month at 31, uh, 31st day, I guess that's Halloween, uh, at uh, 2359 Zulu. So, when you know how to read these NOTAMs, you've got this thing coded out and you've got it figured out and you know that this is a NAV NOTAM. 
Now let's take a look at another kind of notum, and that is an FDC notum. Now FDC stands for Flight Data Center, and the purpose of an FDC notum is to advise you of changes in flight data that affect instrument approaches, aeronautical charts, temporary flight restrictions, things of that sort. And interestingly enough, FDC notums are regulatory in nature. Well, why would these be regulatory? Well, for example, every approach is actually defined by a little regulation that tells you the courses and altitudes to fly and so on. So if they're going to change, say, a missed approach procedure, it'll be an FDC notum. So let's take a look at one. We'll start by looking at the uh, approach plate for the ILS runway 26 at Denver. And let's take a look at the missed approach procedure. It says uh, we're going to climb to 5,900 and then make a climbing right turn to 9,000 on a heading of zero. 070 and on the mile high vortex radial 019 to C duck intersection, which happens to be the mile high 25.5 DME position, and then we're going to hold. Well, if the vortex is out of service, how are we going to hold if we have to use a mile high vortex? Well, we have an answer coming up here, and the answer is an FDC notum. For instance, let's take a look at this. Here we have an FDC notum, and we'll, uh, let's do the one for the uh, Denver approach area here, and let's take a look at the missed approach instructions. The missed approach instructions say climb to 5,900 feet, then make a climbing right turn to 9,000 feet direct to the Gill VOR DME and hold. Wait a minute, that's the gill VOR DME. That's how they fix the problem. It's because the mile high vortex is out of service. And this goes from the 18th year to the fourth month, the 17th day at 1200 Zulu, to the 18th year, the 11th month, the 15th day at 2359. I said Zulu, it's Eastern Standard Time in each of these cases. So uh, that tells us that the gill vortex is uh, VOR DME is what we're going to use for the missed approach. So now now that we know that, you can see it's a really good thing that we checked out our notums. Now, when you get a notum, you think it's going to be temporary in nature. That is, it won't last very long. Normally, they last about seven days or so, but they can be longer. But if it's going to last longer than seven days, they'll put it in this booklet called the Notice to the Airman publication, or the NTAP. It's available on the FAA's website at faa.gov. And you can search on Notice to the Airman from the FAA's homepage to find it. Now, the NTAP, or Notice to the Airman publication, is published every 28 days. It it includes NOTAM Ds and FDC NOTAMs that are going to last more than seven days. And by the way, the NTAP does include published TFRs uh, and special notices around flight restrictions, sporting events, critical infrastructure, law and military facilities, and places like those. Now, the interesting thing is, when you get a weather briefing from the flight service, they're going to assume that you have the NOTAMs that are published in the NTAP. If you actually want the published notums from them, you're going to have them ask them specifically for the published notums. So you either need to look up the information on your own or ask the friendly briefer every time you get a briefing for the published notums. Now, we talked earlier about apps and uh, information on the apps and websites, and they're all very, very valuable. But the thing is, the FAA is not going to ask you any questions about them on your knowledge tests. So while there are many available sources of aeronautical information, the FAA is interested that you use FAA's official sources. So they tell you when you use a chart supplement, NOTAM Ds and FTC NOTAMs all together, you get the most complete information about airport conditions for things like runway closures, runway lighting, and snow conditions. And that's the answer you're always going to find that is the correct answer on the knowledge test. So the best answer for gathering flight information is that you would go to flight service by calling them or going online and use all of the other FAA official information. Then you would have what you need to know before you fly.